So what I got here is a treble hook with a weight, giant treble hook with a giant weight. And uh, I want to drag the bottom for the rod that I lost last week. Welcome back to another kayaking episode of Hook to Cook. Today we are continuing the series of practicing on the lake before we hit the ocean. The plan is to fish. We're going to get some bass, probably some crappie, that's the goal. Maybe trout, who knows. But we're not going to troll too much today. And then we have a special thing that we're going to do today. We're going to try to retrieve the rod that I lost when I flipped the kayak in the last episode. If you missed it, here's what happened. So that rod was on the back of the kayak in the rod holder and it basically sank to the bottom of the lake. Not really sure how deep it is, but we're gonna try. We brought a basically a grappling hook to drag across the bottom. I'm gonna try scraping the bottom for about an hour to see if we can't get it. Also, after coming home after that last episode, I did make some changes so that there's not a yard sale if that flip happened again. So I'll show you all the changes that I made to improve time out on the water once we get home at the end of this video. Thanks for joining. Let's get it. So here's something pretty cool. I set my watch to track basically outdoor bicycling because that's the closest thing that I can think of on this kayak. And it's working and it's saying that I'm cruising at three and a half miles an hour. So that's pretty good. I'm not really struggling. Three and a half miles an hour, just relax. So it's pretty nice, just heading to the spot. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw a jig. So there's a little bit of wind. So I think I'm gonna go with this chatterbait style just to see if we can't find them because the jig fishing is typically reserved for when you actually find where those fish are sitting. So we're gonna give this a shot for a little bit. Ooh, fish, nice. I wasn't even working it. Oh my gosh, it's a good one. It's a good fish. Oh, it's a good fish. That's a nice stud. That's a stud. Oh, guys. Woo! I wasn't even working it. I was like dead sick in it. And when I reeled up my slack, I had him. I had him. Woo! It's a nice fish, guys, on the chatterbait. This is actually a Strike King Rage Blade with a Strike King swimming caffeine trailer. Dope. So sick. It's a nice fish right there, guys. Nice fish. See you later, Fred. It's a pretty good way to start the day right there. Yeah, I just see all this chop on the water and typically that really makes the bass a little bit more active when, oh, I'm getting hit. That makes the bass typically a little bit more active and hunting for food when they know that they're disguised from up top. Oh, that was sick.
Got one. Skating them in. <laughs> Another fish. <laughs> Sick. Oh, dude, he choked it. Dude, he's tiny, but he choked it. Gosh, that was probably five more casts. Way down there. Dude, I think he wanted it. Oh, jeez. There you go. Right there. There he is. Third bass. Woo. Number three. Yeah, they're eating it good. Eating it real good. Man, the bite's real good right now. I think if it's gonna continue this way, I'm gonna limit out pretty soon. I definitely am gonna keep on fishing while the bite is hot. A good bass bite's not too common, but maybe at this lake it is, but gosh, this is this is amazing. I'm gonna keep on going. They're loving that bait, especially the way that they're eating it. You can really tell that they're on the bite when they're swallowing it. And uh, they're really, really liking this rage blade right here. So I decided to keep moving, check out other parts of the lake, just to see what's going on, see if these bass are really coming in shallow. But they're not really in this little cove, so I'm guessing that they're still coming off of the main lake. They're kind of in that transitionary period. Last week, when I did fall in, the water temps were the high 50s, and 60 degrees is usually where the bass like to move up to spawn and so far all we caught today was males it seems so any day now they're gonna start staging up and we'll be able to see them spawning that'll be really cool going mm. tiny guy Oh my gosh. John, what's up? Hey, how are you, buddy? Good, good. I'm at the lake. Beautiful. Lucky. Uh, I know, dude. It's, awesome. it's beautiful out here. Cool, bro. Beautiful. Sounds good. You got it. Later, John. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Bye. Bye, buddy. Bye. Yeah, I was on the phone. Well, my one of my customers was calling right now and Ended up catching that small bass. Slowed down quite a bit, but I know that there's fish in this area. Maybe we can catch one bigger sized. There it is. Another bass. Ah, there's the limit. Number five. Well, Maybe that other one didn't count, but it's all right. Number five. This one's probably 12 inches. Yeah, so I switched to a jig, all green pumpkin, and uh, it's doing really well, half ounce. Just this lack of wind is awesome. I'm just enjoying it. <laughs> this, is, this is great. Just fishing slow, keeping your line tight, and then you can feel them really pick it up. So you really can't ask for much more than that kind of bite. Well, maybe you can. Bigger fish. There you go. Ooh, this one's actually pulling the boat a little bit. Okay. That's a good one. That's a better one. Upgrade. Oh, he came off. Oh. 
dang, I was horse and I barely had him. I just felt him grab it a couple times and ah, dang it. <sighs> just lost him. Can't believe I lost him. Usually when you get them on a jig, they stay pinned. Ah, didn't get him well enough. Had him to the surface and everything. All right, so here's the deal. So what I got here is a treble hook with a weight, giant treble hook with a giant weight. And uh, I want to drag the bottom for the rod that I lost last week. It was a nice setup. And I think if I invest maybe an hour of my time, I might be able to get it back. But if not, it's all good. But I have a general idea of where this rod is. So I'm going to drag the bottom, see if I can't get it. So wish me luck. All right, so I think this is close to where I fell last week. Start dragging bottom. See if we can't recover that rod. I can feel it scraping. So if I just keep on making little circles, I could just get lucky. I understand that the possibility of actually snagging this rod and reel in this area is very slim. <laughs> but it's worth a shot. I feel like I should give it a shot, even, you know, an hour, hour and a half, just to try. It would be worth it, I think. It would be epic if I can. And I am stuck on a log. <laughs> it would be ironic if doing this, I end up flipping again. That would be terrible. Hopefully that doesn't happen. This is cool. I'm getting a little bit of a system down. I can go forward and then once I'm past where I think it might be, I just put it in reverse. Just keep on going forward, back, forward, back, dragging this weight. Log. Felt like it could have been a rod. What's up? No. I think I, I think I feel it. A stick! Hey, you make that in so They're saying, <laughs> look how big it is. Yeah, yeah, it's my second stick. It's probably the same stick I got earlier. I think, I think it'd probably be easier to go buy a new one. He's saying I should. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I've been doing this for, I don't know, 45 minutes. Yeah. All in the same hour. So, huh? I said I would have hoped you found it, but the thing you gotta cut it. I know, I know, I know. It was, you know, I just, I just, I'm happy I made an effort, you know? Yeah, you had to give it a try. I, got, I had to give it a try. All right, so upon the advice of Bob and Leroy, I think, uh, I think I gave it my best shot. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit. I've caught a few sticks, but I could not get my rod back. So anyway, that just proves it's a lesson learned. Make sure that all rods are leashed, even on the lake, or else things like that can happen. And we're back, guys. Excuse the mess. We're actually doing some gardening back there. Got some watermelon growing, some squash, some broccoli, kale, bunch of stuff. The weather's getting really nice. But as mentioned in the beginning of this video, we're going to go over a couple things that uh, I switched up after taking that spill in the last episode. Again, if you missed that, the link is below for the last video. But I did lose some stuff. I did lose a rod and reel. And I also lost a battery for a GoPro. And well, it was actually an external battery that I used to run the GoPro all day. So let me just show you a couple things that I switched up to minimize that happening again. So first off, 
let's take a look at this. I ended up picking up some rod leashes. Found these on Amazon. They just go around your rods. So if you do flip, it'll hold on to your rods. I ended up picking up four of them. And then I got a couple more, those ones back there. And I got a couple more here uh, for the rods that go into the rod holders. Um, I did put a pool noodle around the rod holder in case I did need to pull those out. They'll float and I can jump back in the kayak uh, with no problems because these things, they're yak attack mounts and you just have to pull this lever and they'll pop right off. Uh, so that hopefully will allow me to get right back in. This might create some snagging, but shouldn't be too bad. And then just for secure placement of items that I need to take out and then put back, I put Velcro on the inside there. And this is actually my battery bag for my GoPros. And actually this is the one that I just run on my head. So quick, easy access and then they Velcro in and they're pretty sturdy in there. And they're actually in a dry bag which has Ziploc seals that you zip up. So there's three of those, roll that up and then put that away just like that. And then when I'm done grabbing my battery, I put that there and I'll put actually my used batteries in the PDL drive because it has a compartment there. And then I did the same back here with my external battery. I actually have an external battery here. It's a 10,000 milliamp external battery that runs my GoPro all day. Same deal with the Velcro. And that wire goes up to the GoPro, which I have weatherproofed right here with some earplug silicone all the way around and that keeps this waterproof while still charging all day so that's the ticket so those are just a couple improvements oh yeah I did do the net too I put a little bit of velcro for the net um, I definitely have a nicer net but this one just works is so light and it does float as well but it keeps it out of the way for the moment with the velcro it's not gonna fall off and uh, it's just easy for me to grab right there. So it's perfect. So if you guys found any of those ideas helpful, definitely leave a, leave a thumbs up. Thank you for joining in today's adventure. Even if we did not get that rod, we still got on a good bass bite. And again, like I said in the video, if I didn't try, then you know I, I'd regret it a little bit. But I gave it my best shot to try to get that rod and reel combo back using that treble hook, but it's all good. We got on a great bass bite. It's still a good time of the lake. Beautiful, beautiful day. Can't, can't, can't be mad at that. But stay tuned guys, next episode, we're gonna go salmon fishing. It's the beginning of the season. We're super excited. Uh, we got a couple friends that went out and did very, very well. So hopefully we can do well too. So stay tuned for that. And with that said, we'll catch you guys on the next one. All right. How's it going? I got three bass so far. Bass. 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 <laughs>